So um, today I want to talk to you about Instancer.js v2. Um, first, I will uh, reintroduce you to Instancer.js, um, why we came up with Instancer.js and Instant Search, and um, then I will talk to you about the present, the new release of Instant Search JS, and also then I will talk to you about the future. But first, a little bit about me. I'm Alex, and I'm a software engineer at Algolia. I mainly work on JS tools for our users. I'm one of the two developers from uh, the original team of Instance Search JS, and I'm currently the lead of Instance Search JS. But enough about me. Let's talk about Instance Search. And clearly, the first question that might pop in your head is, what is Instance Search? Instance Search is a family of library that is used to uh, create and build um, search UIs. In this here, you can see two examples of usage of Instance Search JS yes, from demo that we built. Uh, that are pretty cool. You should check them out. I will give you the link. I forgot about that. Um, and it all started in 2015. In November 2015, we released Instance Search JS v1. And we were we were pretty happy about um, how well it was received. Because now we have more than uh, 1,700 uh, live implementations, a lot of upvotes on product hunt, um, 1,600 uh, GitHub stars, and uh, 111 releases. We also, well, we also have 42 contributors. I didn't make this number up. So that's awesome. It was well received. So we thought, why not make this success for other JS frameworks and other platforms. In November 2016, uh, we released React Instant Search. So it's Instant Search, but specifically for React. So it's more, um, yeah, it's better for React. And also, we created uh, Instant Search Android in February 2017. Soon, we will also release um, Instant Search for iOS and Vue.js. But really, the question is, why do we invest so much in such libraries? And the reason is that search is its own domain of expertise. On one hand, you have specific concepts and vocabulary that are maybe foreign, like disjunctive faceting, hierarchical faceting. Also, you can have like thousands of options that you have to go through the API to learn about them. Also, on the other hand, you have UX best practices that are specific to search. For example, how to make a good search input. And we know that gaining this knowledge is really hard to gain. Um, yeah. And we know that search is important, but search is only part of, of your project. So how do we solve that with um, instant search? We solve that in, uh, with Instant Search by translating the concepts of search into UI elements. And also, we package in those UI elements the UX best practices by default. So let's have a look at the key concept of this library. So in Instant Search, you have the widgets, and you have Instant Search, the core of Instant Search. When a user interacts with a widget, it tells uh, Instant Search uh, that something has changed. Then Instant Search will create the query to Algolia. And then when the query come, uh, the results come back from Algolia, it will be propagated to the uh, widgets. Let's take an example, more concrete example uh, than that. In this um, website, uh, which is actually the blog from Algolia, uh, you have three widgets. One is the search box, which actually let the user uh, filter the results with a query string. One is the menu, which actually let the user go through the different categories and filter the results. And the results are displayed with the hit widgets. When a user type a query, it will go to Algolia through uh, Instant Search, the core of Instant Search. Then the results will come back, and it will be propagated both in the hits, but also in the menu, because as you can see, there are counts, and those counts are updated as the um, uh, results come back. 
So now we've covered the uh, basics of instant search. So let's see what's in uh, the V2. Like. So as I said earlier, instant search JS was released 18 months ago. And we've learned a lot um, during this time. We've learned from your feedback. We've learned from our experience building other libraries such as instant search JS, like um, React instant search or um, the others that we built, uh, and also from our internal usage. We, build, uh, we are building demos for us as marketing, as marketing demos, but also we are building a lot of demos for our clients. So here are some key learnings that we, that we got from those feedbacks. On one hand, customization is limited. We want to avoid bloating the, um, the API of the widgets. So we want to minimize the surface API that we provide. But on the other hand, we don't want to limit you. So it's kind of a, a hard problem here. On the other hand, we have a very um, steep learning curve. Not at the beginning, because the widgets are prepackaged and they are very easy to use. But once, once you've reached the limit of this API, we have to go to the custom widgets. And the custom widgets, even though the, it's API, the API of those widgets are simple, the internals are not. So there is also a problem here. So we, we want to solve that as well. And um, also, we made some um, choices in the API that is right now blocking us. So we decided to make a V2. So in this V2, we have three main parts. One is the connectors, which is actually an intermediate API for customization of the widgets. And the second part is the new documentation. We want to make sure that everybody can go from apprentice to master in as smooth as path possible. And overall, we want to uh, make improvements so that we make the project future-proof. But first, let's dig into this uh, new customization API. And let's have a look at a real example. So in this uh, screen, you can see that it's actually the Algolia block that I showed you earlier. We have this menu widget. And the menu widget has a very specific behavior. It displays one element at a time. Oh, it's, you can only select one element at a time. So if you click on news, it will select this one and unselect this one. Also, it displays all the values at all time. So again, if I select news, the other elements will still be displayed. And we have a special value called all, which actually unselects the filter. And actually, this uh, behavior, this UX behavior, is the same as uh, the one from another UI element, which is the dropdown. It's not the same look, but it has the same properties. You can select only one, one item at a time. You, can, you still display all the items, and you have a no selection uh, item. So what if we want to use a dropdown instead of a menu, uh, or instead, instead of a list of items like I showed you on the blog? Well, it was not really doable in V1, because in, in V1, we had a built-in uh, rendering. And uh, even though we had options to modify somehow the, um, the rendering, we couldn't, do, we couldn't go from divs and for the items to a select with options. But it is doable with the new connector API. So let's dig a, a little bit more into details about this new API. So as I said, it's an intermediate API for creating new types of widget factories. I go into that more details. Um, widgets basically have two parts. One is the rendering and handling the user interactions. And the other part is the business rules, how to handle the Algolia engine. And, and so with this new abstraction, we're actually separating the behavior from the rendering. This feature is really a refactoring. It's, uh, we're kind of separating those uh, from the widgets. Let's see how it goes 
into working. Um, without the connectors, you had those widgets of employees that I talked to you about. You had a set of options, and with those set of options, you create new instances. And then you attach these instances to uh, instant search. The problem here is that, as I said, uh, the, built, the rendering is in the widget, so it's built in, and you can't really remove it. And uh, you can use the options, but it has its limits. With the new connector API, we actually uh, have this new connector thingy. You provide a new rendering, and it creates a new widget factory. And then it works the same. So the widget factory can be used then to create instances. Each widget, um, uh, no. yeah. So now um, we will be able to create new custom widgets completely. Every widget that we have right now that has a render uh, that renders some UI will have its connector. So you can actually basically customize any of them. And so. We have uh, now uh, a, a same number of widgets and connectors, and this takes a lot of place, uh, a lot of space. So it requires to have some more space to document it, and that's why we are actually. That's one of the reasons why we are going for a new documentation. In this new documentation, we uh, want to provide uh, a getting started. Uh, we want to provide guides so we can uh, actually help you for each. Uh, each kind of specific use cases that we can't actually add to the API. And also we want to expand uh, the reference API documentation. Right now it's a single page. Tomorrow it will be a lot of pages. Well, not tomorrow, tonight it will be a lot of pages. And this gives us so much more space to actually help you. Uh, this is very important to us. Documentation is really key at Algolia, and this is one of the, of the examples. And I told you that we want also to make overall improvements. And let's go through it. So we want to do overall, overall improvement. And we have to do some breaking change. But fear not, we have a, a guide to do that, thanks to, to, new, to the new documentation. We have also a new internal implementation of the slider widget, which was actually putting us, uh, putting us back. Um, we have a new default theme, so you have a great experience for, from the first millisecond. We have a new way to test widget a la Storybook. I don't know if you know Storybook, but it's an awesome tool. And we have something similar. We have uh, also uh, updated the search function. That's for those who knows uh, what is instant search, but really it was a pain. And also we made this, uh, the build smaller by only using uh, Preact. I only cite the more uh, meaningful fixes and removing road, roadblocks, but also we added a lot of uh, fixes. So to sum up, with this version, we want to give you more power to customize the widgets. We want to simplify the project for the newcomers. And we also want to make sure that our core is future-proof so that we can continue to invest in it and provide you again and again, more value. And now, let's talk about the future. So, in the next version, the next steps will be to stabilize the core and make sure that everything is clean so we can move forward. We want to update the tool stack, uh, the test, the build, so it's up to date. And uh, we want to give you more and more guidance. So that's the guide that I uh, told you about earlier. Also, we want to do some more experimentation, but we'll, we'll do some announcements about that. But next, we want to have some guidelines for the future. We want to bring more and more features from the engine to the UI with instant search. We want to not be anywhere. That sounds like a bit uh, worrying, but actually want to uh, uh, give you the assurance that we actually, we are not going to put you some uh, libraries that you don't want in your project. And last but not least, this is very important to us, as we have more and more instant search libraries, we want to bring consistency. So you can move from one instant search to another instant search very easily. 
And now back to the present. Instant search GSV2 is available now. We've published a uh, release candidate on uh, NPM and GS Deliver, so it's actually you can use it. You can use it right now. And if you're using uh, Instant Search GS V1, you can actually migrate very easily, as we try to not break many stuff. And also to guide you, the new documentation is live. You can follow this link uh, if you see the presentation afterwards. And also. I want to really encourage you to show us what you're doing with Instant Search. It's very important to us and it really pleases us. We want to promote that. And so uh, I really encourage you to go on the community forum. Uh, it's an awesome place. If, you've not, if you haven't been there already, really go, go, go there. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. I have some time for questions, so if you have any questions. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's, so, it's a microphone, yeah. So do you plan to adapt uh, instant search to some other uh, framework like Angular? So, yes, that's in our plan. Um, we haven't done it already because we are only a small team, but we are, Growing and growing, so we are going to do uh, such thing as uh, Angular Instant Search, and uh, the connector might help us on that, but we need to do some R&D on that. Uh -huh. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, what percentage of companies use the instant search versus a backend implementation? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, which company uses? Uh, so wh what amount of, like, do more companies use the, this instant search, the front end, or they do more do a backend integration through your Python? Uh, I don't have the numbers in mind, sorry. But uh, yeah, we, we do have a lot of uh, customers using the uh, backend implementation. Um, yeah. Especially the big ones, they tend to avoid. To, they, they try to hide it somehow. Uh, Alex, I do have a question. Uh, what's the best way for people to contribute? The best way to, for, good question. Uh, <laughs> of course, all our libraries are open source. Uh, and uh, the best way to contribute is to go on GitHub. Um, yeah, oh, but you know that even going to the community forum is already a contribution for us. Feedbacks are very welcome. No, no, yeah. Ah, another question. No, no, no. <laughs> um, you said and, uh, uh, the Elastic Instant Search is open source. And uh, do you think uh, you will open, for example, with a contribution, somebody to adapt Instant Search? To another database. So, uh, it will be another search engine, but yeah, uh, the question is uh, correct, and uh, we've had that in mind for a while. Actually, we I just closed uh, an issue about that uh, two days ago. So, we are very open to that. Um, actually, if you want to test it, go ahead, feel free. It's really open source. Um, but the, the thing is that it might be hard. Okay. We are using, uh, I showed you the core of Instant Search. We have something inside called the, the helper. It has a very shitty name. But the helper is very bound to the API of, uh, of Algolia. And I don't know if the concepts actually map right. So that may be hard, but should be doable. I just want to add something about that. In the early days of uh, creating Instant Search, we are in touch with the team of uh, UI Kit. Search kit, search, yeah. kit, search kit, which is pretty much the same thing, but for Elasticsearch. So we discussed uh, patterns, UX pattern, and they took inspiration from us. We took inspiration from them. So there are similar. It, there's a way to adapt. At ours is mostly specific to Algolia as a backend, but the UX patterns might be the same. If you can have a look uh, on search kit, if you want to use it for Elasticsearch. So uh, just to add on that. Thank you. Um, so it's a React-based implementation. And uh, they're not reusing Instant Search at all. It's just two complete separate implementations. And so, yeah, you can use it. Uh, it will be only for React. Uh, I didn't tell it, but say it, but uh, actually Instant Search JS is completely vanilla JS. So you can actually use it in any kind of context, sort of. 
Any other questions? Nope. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much.